All right, Big Bang, today is Monday. It is February 21st. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. It's Snake Draft Monday. Uh, we have long-time, long-time recurring guest for the Snake Drafts. We have Rico Bosco, who is currently in a car on his way uh, to an undisclosed location, which you'll know by now because you're going to see him where he's at Friday. But um, Rico, first, how mad is everybody that you're in the car and you'll be talking to us for an hour and a half? Oh, uh, yeah, I laid it out to him. We got no radio. So, yeah, uh, I mean, they're definitely mad. Marty's probably livid, but I told him it's a, it's a, if it starts going sour, I got a couple of brain cells here to hopefully help me out with the draft. So, <laughs> how many exactly would you shoving, say? How many brain cells? Keep shoving one. Uh, Spider has, I don't know what IQ is, but Spider, if there's 100 like percent on the pie chart, Spider has 97, Dukes has two, Marty has one. <laughs> I think that's, a that's that, leaves, that leaves you with zero. I have 126. Yeah, well, that's me being a team guy. Four. <laughs> um, but all right, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll the elephant in the room. Let's just let's just cut it here. Uh, you and uh, White Sox Dave need to uh, hash it out. I, I don't. Like. I don't think there is any elephant in the room. No, that's. The, I think that's the thing. I'm just saying. Like, uh, listen, Dave. I saw what you said. I saw what Chief said. I can tell you that you you don't have to. Accept the apology. You don't have to understand what was going on. But I think, I hope, you know, like, to get to that point, it was really bad. If you're interested in hearing it, I'm more than happy to. If you don't, no hard feelings. We'll move forward, like, regardless. Really, I'm truthfully, I just was upset I let you down. So, if it, you want to hear it out of how I, got, how I got there, I'll let you know, like, off camera. But trust me, it was bad. Like, that's the thing. It got really – it was bad, so. No, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you had planned on, like – divulging anything on the on the snake draft right now we can talk off camera all you want you got my number i'm yeah that's phone all call. I'm yeah, just saying yeah. It got, yeah it's all i didn't reach out it just it got bad that's all like it, it had to be bad i think if you see that makeup of me so that's all it seemed cool like deal. You i love hearing I know that chief, i talked to chief a little bit and uh i mean his reaction was upsetting so you know sorry but i'm glad you're you're being big about it like i had not been if it was me, I probably, you know, the other way around. I don't know if I would would do that. You know what I mean? Like I have been known to hold grudges, so appreciate it. But uh, happy to be back on this. I was happy when Eddie reached out. Yeah, let's have a a, a hilarious snake draft. Um, you're always great on the snake draft. So when I didn't even know you were coming on until like five ten minutes ago, and I'm glad you are. I think it you make for, I mean, the best snake draft guest. Absolutely, you, Clem, Trent handful of other people you're definitely on that pantheon so welcome back it's good to have you thanks there you go um and in honor of you being back today is the official comeback draft rico um we're drafting comebacks there's five there's going to be a fashion category there's going to be an athlete category there's uh the game category a fictional category and a miscellaneous category uh so those are the five um, before we continue, congrats to me for winning the um, Love Songs draft pretty handily. Uh, I I felt good. You were ready to crown Carl. I think, was it between us at the end? Yeah, you, know, you you won convincingly, but yeah. you, you didn't thank somebody else. But come on. Oh, well, that's what I, I was getting shit about. That. I didn't know that until um, yesterday, actually. But congratulations to Kirk for the uh, bus <laughs> draft. What, what it was, I was not, you know neglecting Kirk hmm. the issue was was that sometimes we record before we know the winner and since I was traveling that week the, the winner was not crowned yet so Kirk had not won yet so retroactively congratulations to Kirk for the yeah, bus no draft. disrespect to Kirk or the Kirk Minahan show they were they had a little fun with it nothing too serious though yeah well you know it's fine Kirk we could uh <laughs> we, we, we could go on and on Kirk's yeah. welcome back again yeah. he was great he was very good he Kirk was very, was very good, good. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, what's going on here today. Rico, since you're uh, in the car and everything is kind of, uh, you know, a little compact over there, we'll just get the show on the road here. Uh, we'll do order right now. Uh, Harry has number one through five behind his back. Rico, what number is it? Three. Yes, it is three. It's three, uh, Rico. <laughs> yeah. I would, uh, where should I pick? I got the first, I can get whatever pick I want. Take first and take the obvious one. Cuff these guys. All right, uh, I'm gonna go one. 
Wow. All right, one through four, uh, Carl. I'll take the. Uh, I'll take number two. No. Chief. I'll take one. Yes. I'll take the second spot. Wow. Flying off the board, top. Uh, one through three, WSD. I'm going to throw a curveball here. I'm going to go with one. No. I'm going to go with two. Yes. Um, shit, I guess I'll take three. Why not? Let's just keep it going. One or two, Carl. One. Yes. Uh, I'll take the fifth spot. All right, White Sox, Dave, you're four. Um, Love picking it. Leave it to fucking Carl to ruin our little fun game we were just having. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, the order is Rico, Chief, Eddie, White Sox, Dave, Carl. Uh, what? Yeah, right there. We might have to be uh, temporarily muting Rico. Uh, so producers, be ready for I'm, that. I got. I'm in the. I'm, listen, I'm in the. I'm in. This is the first time I'm ever doing this in the war room, and I got my <laughs> offensive coordinator, my scout. So we got some conflicting. All right, Spider has opted out of helping, which. <laughs> there goes 97 percent of the yeah. brain trust. I know that goes 97 percent. So I think there's a clear one. I have to take it. That's a time out though. That's an ultimate. Dig at Marty that you gave Dukes two brain smells and Marty one. I mean, it's uh, it's fair though. That's that's how it is though. Don't worry. I'll take I'll go out to take a piss somewhere in Ohio and he'll fucking leave me. So he'll get back at me. Don't worry. <laughs> I I love my guy Dukes, but two is generous for him. Two two is uh, generous for your brain cells. <laughs> eh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kidding, Dukes. Um, before we get started, though, I do want to talk about Fuzzy. You guys know the drill by now. Fuzzy is here for you if you're in a situation um, with your pet and, uh, you know, you, you're you not really sure if it's uh, an emergency visit, but you need to talk to someone on a, a virtual telemedicine thing. Uh, Fuzzy is here for you because Fuzzy is a telehealth service for pet parents that offers 24-7 access to personalized pet care from veterinary and professionals. Uh, from everyday questions to middle of the night emergencies, Fuzzy has the answers pet parents need. Through live chat and virtual vet consultations available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Fuzzy can answer your pet questions big and small, urgent and every day. Uh, Fuzzy can also recommend the exact right products for your pet, all of which are hand-picked by their established team of veterinarian professionals and available at discounts exclusive to Fuzzy members. From getting your pet's diet just right to meeting your middle of the night needs to finally figure out what makes their breath smell that way, nothing is too big or small for a quick Fuzzy call. So right now, Fuzzy is offering our listeners a free seven-day trial membership. Go to yourfuzzy.com slash dog to say it today to sign up. That's a free seven-day trial at Y-O-U-R-F-U-Z-Z-Y.com slash dog. And for a limited time, Fuzzy is also offering a special discount of $20 off any of your pet products needs. That's pet meds, that's supplements, that's food, and more with promo code dog. That's yourfuzzy.com slash dog. One more time for your free trial of Fuzzy with access to 24-7 personalized pet care and vet-recommended products. Uh, Dave, how important is that to have 24-7 access? You never know when the dog's going to break into the, uh, you know, yes, the you're three right. cheese stash. What did you say the, the weed stash was? Like how many times people go to the vet because like some they of the told dogs me it was, it was nine out of ten times. Nine out of ten times. So if your dog yeah. accidentally ate weed, obviously lock your stuff up. Don't let that happen in the first place. But uh, yourfuzzy.com slash dog mm -hmm. is there for you if you run into a situation like Dave did. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Go I would have loved to service. have that service that night. Yes. So now you have it. So now mm -hmm. it's better. Okay. Yourfuzzy.com slash dog. All right, Rico, you're on the clock, number one overall. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean, I think the sweatshirt might be a little bit of a hint. Um, yep. It's got to be athlete. It's got to be Michael Jordan. Easily. All right, the, the, board, the boardroom is not happy with the pick, <laughs> but how, how do you say comeback? The man facts, I'm back. It's mm -hmm. the biggest comeback ever. Um I, I don't. I don't think there's. I think this is the most. Is I didn't feel confident about this draft, but I think this is the most one-one out there. Yep. And especially the fact that you guys are Chicago guys. How do I let this slip through? It's got to be MJ. It would not have slipped past a second pick. I can tell you that. Uh, Ken you. Jack, please put Michael Jordan on the Wizards for this spot. Yes. <laughs> yes. One hundred percent. And uh, that's penance. I deserve that. I deserve, I'll take a little penance. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, yeah, it's a, it's as one one as it gets. Yep. K 
can, can we try to play? Yeah, I'll that? try. I mean, I'll try. If nobody wants to, I'll I try. I got it too. Uh, a comeback. I mean, he retired himself. He he allegedly. He, you know, he he. Sure, whatever, dude. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude, dude. Talk about it tomorrow. But for now, uh, you know, he retired himself, and and it was he was gone for a year and a half, and it wasn't like he was. I guess you know as I'm like reasoning this out, I probably this is like impossible. It's like well, he's coming back his, from his father's murder. That's pretty emotionally disturbing. Yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. I, I thought mean, I'd have something. I have nothing. The only thing is, is he? It's not like there was any decline in play when he did retire. He was in the prime of his career, peak of his career, and when he did come back, it like nobody expected him to miss a beat at like physically, skill wise as but a basketball But they did player. lose that series to Orlando. That is true. Mm-hmm. That know, is true. When he first came back, so I was like, ooh. But then he... <laughs> His baseball body. That's the only possible nitpick there is, if it is even worthy of nitpicking. I mean, it's a repeat three-peat. It's the greatest, it's the greatest comeback in And sports. Rico, like he said, the I'm back in the paper. It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, right, yeah. The news release yeah. was mm-hmm. iconic. Was the word comeback even around prior to him? Yes. Yes. I know. You can't, yeah. and you can't really even like think it'll ever even remotely happen on the same level again because that's like the news broke via fax. Like it didn't. It wasn't like you heard a rumor. I'm yeah. sure there was some level of buzz, but like it was just so much better to break news back then. Oh yeah. That's, oh yeah. They would beat their dicks to it, senseless. Mm-hmm. You know. I just like the pop culture around it too. Like you go, you mm-hmm. had to go have a 45 jersey. You know, like that game, I remember still on NBC, they played who, the Pacers? Yeah. I, I, in the I, first game yep. back? I think it was the Pacers, yeah. Yep. They yeah, sucked. so it was like, it was either Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, it was must-see TV, like, you had to watch it. I just think uh, it's it's a very easy 1-1. One, one. It's a good pick. Yeah, mm-hmm. good pick. Mm-hmm. Can't, can't, can't uh, disagree there. Uh, all right, Chief, what do you got? I'll go, I think there are certain categories that are thinner than others, so I'm going to go to fictional. And I'll take our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So oh. big time, big time comeback. Um, Jesus was the second pick. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, you believe it actually happened, so that doesn't make it fictional to you. No, I don't. Isn't this Catholic chief over here? Yeah, I'm a Catholic. I was, I was getting yeah, I mean, cute with it. Yeah, what? I was getting cute. I didn't think... I, I think this is a gift and a curse because I taught you guys all these curveballs in the snake draft. Yeah, and that's then true. You guys are drafting these out of the – and now cheap, cute, cutesy Chief is stealing all my fucking picks. It was a great comeback. Back from the dead. Back from the dead. Be. Greatest story ever told is what they say. Jesus is a real person, though. Uh, Maybe. We this is the fictional category, and I will submit a veto on that alone. Oh. No, you, you could you. not. Here's the – Carl, this is where I accept it. There's a lot of people who don't believe in Jesus. So to mm-hmm. them, it's fictional. And I sure, there's a lot of people that don't allowed. accept Jesus as as like a savior, but as a historical figure, yeah, yeah. it's conclusively proven that Jesus did exist. How? I, I don't think there's any question in the history, yeah, in the history Jewish, that, it, that Jesus lived. But not the necessarily as lived. the son of God. So he, you're taking the son of God. I'm taking Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is what I said. Okay. So, so is he our Lord and Savior? He's... Sounds like Dave's vetoing too. Depends it, on you can't veto. It's impossible to veto. I it's not impossible I for. <laughs> I mean, if you want to take it for miscellaneous, I would absolutely allow it. But for That's fictional, true. like you, why, why, why? Explain. Ex- be, first of all, explain. Fictional means there's no fake, and you don't there, believe it's fake. I do believe it's fake. I don't believe that he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. I don't believe that. I mean, I don't either. But like that goes against. I, but religion. I do believe in Jesus. I mean, is, the category is fictional. And Jesus yeah. was a real I, person. I veto for fictional 100%. Now, okay. if, if you want to take the about moment, him are, if, are you taking the if you're taking the resurrection of Christ? You can't prove that they're fictional either. I mean, I guess you. I would let that slide in there. I don't know. Unproven right, so doesn't. I think it's going to be miscellaneous. Is a miscellaneous yeah, pick? I got no problem you're with You're going to have to do miscellaneous. Why, why should I be boxed into that? Unproven does not mean fake. That's the two guys. It's too different. It's too you <laughs> have to prove it to be true. It do, That doesn't make it fake. Fictional equals fake. Just unproven isn't fake. That's that's that we can't prove black holes be exist. Best, best point and the White Sox yes, they can. Those aren't fictional. Yes, they can prove that black holes exist. You know what I'm getting at. 
and, and recently, I think they finally got a picture of one or something. But like you, fictional is you can take it for miscellaneous. Otherwise, I veto one hundred percent. Rico, any thoughts here? I was gonna get cute with fictional, but I think the guy's got multiple uh, eligibility. He can play first base and third base and slot <laughs> him over to miscellaneous. It's still a great pick. Yeah, I, I don't think that hurts you if you keep it a miscellaneous. Yeah. I it's think it's still a great. Well, I think yeah. I think miscellaneous is a wide open category. I might have some other things for that. Of course, you're, they, trying, you're trying to skirt listen, the Jesus rules. is a great pick for the comeback yes, draft. No a, one is saying Jesus is a bad pick. Mm -hmm. This is a it's a very like good pick. It's I think uh, you could have gone first overall. Per, uh, very <laughs> over <laughs> Jordan. I mean, yeah, you, <laughs> Jesus. I, I'm, I'm with Dave. I think Jesus. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say Jesus' comeback story is probably a little bit more Come impactful on, bro. in the history. I mean, of he rose from the Dead by like this is story pure, has it. and he didn't just die on that Friday. It was a tough death. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a hell of a comeback. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So you can only make that on, argument. only on the IR for like twenty four hours. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> has a spot in this draft. A thousand uh, percent. Yeah. It's just to Rico's point, position and classification, and I and he fits. I just, like our fictional. green is popping on this camera. By the way, and we look great. Yep. And you guys can get these at the Barstool Sports Store dot com backslash collections backslash Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day! Um, uh, and subscribe to this on YouTube. By the yeah. way, so um, it yeah, has to be, I, I think I, that I, I, I can. Can I ask a quick, quick hypothetical mm -hmm. with, without offending our religion teachers? Yeah. Can I ask? Can you hear? Yeah. Okay. How long do you yeah, make them carry the cross through the town and, like, abuse them and they're whipping them? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you have stopped with the cross? Like, if I was going to die anyway, right, why suffer carrying this big, heavy thing? I would just go limp legs like Dave at the Super Bowl, lay there, and just die right there, right? Oh, um, maybe he thought that it wasn't, you know, I don't know. Maybe it was a symbolic. Someone his, his cross to bear. Someone that was his yeah. cross I got to bear. It. He's a prideful guy, but I'm just saying – like real life, I probably would have just been like, "All right, just kill me now." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe thought they're gonna have a yeah. change of heart mm -hmm. on the hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all you he think about. He was waiting change for heart. daddy. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Yeah, all right, um, interesting. Uh, White Sox, David. <laughs> I, I mean, I think for fictional, there, it's absolutely. Are you gonna, are you gonna back off? I'm or are you no, gonna I mean, I think it should be allowed. There's no real historical record. I can't get in. I, I fail religion. Like I, I said, know you so did. I can't really t have a take. Yeah, wow. I mean, there, there's no real historical record of him living. There's no, there's no. It was evidence. two thousand years ago. Was so there there's historical two, there's records two, of anything? Fuck yeah, there are, dude. Uh, do, do you uh, did you do, do you think Radio Marcus Carmen Aurelius is uh, existing? He had all sorts of. He never wrote any of his own shit either. It was all just transcribed after the fact. There's no written documents. That doesn't make it fictional. Fictional is fake. Just because it's unproven <laughs> doesn't mean it was fake. You're arguing it's, two totally it, different things. No, I'm not. Fictional is... If I don't think that those events transpired, then they would be a great story, but they are fiction. Therefore, they are fiction. Those All events... Right. I, I veto. All right. You're not changing my mind with your argument. I think White Sox... They I mean, I think, um, the Jesus Roman Empire... More. Didn't they put him... I'm, I'm convinced... Mm -hmm. That it's like the Roman Empire put him to death. Like Caesar existed before Jesus. Yeah. Like the Roman Empire put a man named Jesus to death. Like there isn't much debate about whether or not Jesus existed. The fictional I part that I think you can all. argue argue is if you were drafting like comeback moments mm -hmm. or like then then yeah, you could tease tease out the resurrection. I, I think, but Jesus well, as a what person it, lit like he the, existed. Well, but it's we're okay, but we're drafting. He he then may take have. What? Then take God as your fictional if you don't believe in God. I didn't say that. Taking the son this of is, God. This is we're getting into uh, semantics. Yeah, we're, but, uh, we're, we uh, already moved it to miscellaneous, so we'll I, keep it. I great pick. No, you did. What do you mean? He no, did I'm, it. He I'm, did I'm, it. I'm waiting for it to be officially. It's a fit. I mean, two veto. What are you going to you, like, yes. I came out right away and said yeah. veto. And you stuck I, with I, that. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying with Jesus is a, a veto. I guess Jesus it's miscellaneous, but you guys are fucking assholes because <laughs> there is no historical documentation proving that any of these events happened. They were cobbled together 300 years after he died. It's the same thing as Dionysus' story. There's all these things. It's all just fucking attributed to him after the fact. That makes it fiction. You guys not knowing what's like all the stories around it doesn't make you guys right. It is fiction. It's a fictional story, fictional character. I think it should be fictional. I think you're wrong. Well, <laughs> you're wrong. What a, well, uh, what no, show. Think, you guys are what, assholes. What I, I, I think it's an absolutely home run pick. And like I said, I think it could have gone yeah. first overall under the miscellaneous great category. Pick. Nobody loves drafting Jesus more than Dave. So you stole it from him. Yeah, like, Look at it that way. I was going to take it if it got to me. 
Did Dave take Jesus as his fictional person in the no. fight draft? Yes. That was or did he take his historical person? Number five overall. I don't oh, know. That's I don't know a good question. I don't know how he broke him down. I could, do we have a moment <laughs> here? Oh, that's a good that point. Look it up. I could pull it up. Let's pull that up because I, mean, I think that would have to negate his veto. Completely. Oh, no. Mind, minds and brains can shift in shape if that even was it, the case. I mean, I hate to say this because it was so long ago, um, but – there's no categories on the graphics. I so. didn't. Yeah, we started doing that a little bit. But later. also, time out. Just looking at it. Oh, I think it was because there's one of every four major sports. And I think wild card was the fifth category. Okay. So it was it was counts for. Yeah. Like, yeah, I took a late night <sighs> restaurant bouncer. And, you know, you took Steven Seagal. And Chief took Johnny Cochran. What a pick that was, huh? Yeah. Um, Johnny no, Cochran. Get you out of trouble. <laughs> you can murder somebody and get away with it. Um, all right. So, Jesus sure. Christ, miscellaneous. Uh, is Chief just one pick, thing. To, it's good pick. Run. Just, one yeah, thing, pick. just one, one thing to lighten the mood for you, Chief. It's an omen. We just passed the sign for Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. There you so, go. Look crazy that. that. Now I got to go to Mass. Maybe, maybe he was born this in a manger. Everywhere. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe there were three yeah. wise men. Maybe there wasn't. I don't know. It's probably, You're telling it's me Frankincense and Myrrh is, no, is no, tr no truth to that? I don't know. All right. Probably not, actually, based upon other records. They just – I don't want to get into it. We'll do, you know what? We'll do a podcast about it. I think we already have, actually. All right. Um, all right. So, it's to me, I don't know how I follow that up. I'm in a fucking shit situation now. Um, so, I guess I'm just going to take a game. Or should I go fashion, Dave? Which one should go I do? Go fashion. Fashion? Why? Because yeah. you want a game. No, I don't want to I, – I, I mean – it's a toss up for me at this point. Yeah, I'm everything's gonna murky after I'm those I'm gonna two take picks. game. There's two fucking really good ones to choose from. But is I guess can I say something before I make the pick? Like the series count? Like is that I think in my head it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I'm, I'm taking Red Sox and Yankees two thousand four ALCS. I, I I had it as game. I had that number one miscellaneous for me. Oh really? Mm. Oh fuck. Well, it's it's uh it's mm, game. I would game, go I game. I'd give them hmm. Eddie. I guess go game go game four because it ignited the series. Like in game seven, they beat the shit out of them. Game four was the Robert Steele, no? Yeah, yeah. The Dave Robert Steele. So I'd go that. Yeah. Like everyone's gonna know. You're gonna get credit for the series itself. Yeah. Just go game. Go game four. I, in my Roberts brain, the steel. You said game, Ed. But it's I, not the, the text game. Message. That, that's not, I was it's game thinking, four, 20, 2003 yeah. comeback. Ain't I don't even know if it's a top five game. No offense. It's a series. No, it's, it's a moment. top five game. Like I mean, the, the uh, Dave Roberts steal and everything is pretty big. Yeah. So I hmm. I mean, I can give you a Yankees playoff game comeback right now that's significantly yeah. bigger than that game. So if you want to take the series, I don't want to throw a wrench if you prep series and I, other people prep series. I prep series as well. Because we'll, I was thinking like, comp like sports competition what did you more prep, so than Rico? singular game. Game, singular games. Singular games. I mean, I'm fine going back on it. It's all right. That's fine. We'll stick the game. We're uh, we're not even three picks in. And there's a lot, a lot of, of contract, a lot of tape. A lot I of should contract. just be. I should leave. I'm it's, sorry. This is like uh, one of the first ten drafts that we did. Those are always the best. Ones. Um, all right, then. If that's the case, I'm going to pivot to uh, Patriots Falcons 28-3. I, I mean, it was just an unbelievable game, and it's you know. Uh, and it pales in comparison to, you know, Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday, but uh, I'm happy to get a third overall, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great, all, great comeback. That's all there really it is. Owns it owns 28-3. Like, there will never be a time when it's 28-3 in, in anything, and you're not instantly yeah. like, oh, yeah, remember that time? You know, and the Falcons were, like, the perfect people that blow the lead. Yeah. Too. It wasn't like it was, like, some historic franchise, and you feel bits like, no, yeah, you're the Falcons. This is what you do. You show up and you blow stuff. They're, right. like, the only team it could have been. Yes. Yeah. And they've, like, uh, yeah. still never fully recovered. No, they, no, they're oh, dead. It, no yeah, it's, they're dead. Matt, Matt Ryan, Ryan's been, all of them. I, straight down. Yeah. I really think they need to permanently, like, change the logo and the uniform and everything that they wore in that game. Just get rid of the stink gone. off it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, go back to the uh, – like the Deion Sanders uniforms full time. Like I know they kind of get a little bit more towards that with some throwbacks and alternates, but they just need to like erase that entire period of time. And like nobody, even since then, like you can't trust them when you game. But like every the Falcons are just like the worst team. You know, they're just like the most frustrating, not the worst. Obviously, because they're That's constantly bad... like I feel like they're always like decent. Yeah, like they've they had the good quarterback, good the skill players. They always have the names. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's then tough. just a million. And what, I mean, just what an Ugh. what an absolute treat of a Super Bowl to watch from do you, just an outsider's perspective. Yeah. I don't know how much we can talk about this, but I watched it at a buddy south of maybe fifteen other guys, um, and we were all trying our fucking damnedest to live bet Arizona, uh, uh, Atlanta, um, or live oh, bet the, the Patriots, Pats, yeah. but the servers for the shitty websites we were using back then were fucking awful, so we couldn't do it. And they were like, plus, plus, you know, 2,000, plus 2,500. Yeah. And we were all doing it. We're like, this is the fucking Falcons versus the Patriots. Why are you shaking There's your head, Rico? There's a good shot at a comeback. You, you never get that back. Like, I know what I'm supposed to, but that moment, that plus sign, he's never going to get that back in his life. So it's upsetting. I'm shaking my head in like, almost like, like sorry for him. It's like when you see a guy like going in with his wife on a shopping Sunday in the NFL and all you had to do was pick something out quick. You know, the guy, you're like, sorry, man, like shaking your head. Like, you know, he's in for a long one. You're never getting that plus sign back. I feel bad for you. <laughs> no, I get, I've been there. I know, I know how it is. Like it's a regret. You didn't get it in. You're never getting it back. Nope. And just Falcons fan, I'm st- I'm still sorry. It's like one of those things where it's like you're still like. You're I just feel still like sorry. I feel like they got the championship they wanted this year. Anyways, they would much rather have Georgia win it than uh, than the Falcons. All you those think people, so? I think so. I wouldn't be I surprised know. if you're right there. I think maybe I think I'm right. Maybe, um, but all right, great game and the two point conversion fact. It was just insane. Yep. Um, White Sox, Dave. I gotta go to the. I gotta go do it, Carl. I gotta go Illinois, Arizona. I accidentally I knew that had was a little, coming. Freudian slip there when I said Arizona instead of Atlanta, but it's it's burned into my memory. Everything about that comeback is just burned into my memory. Haven't I, you said in previous record that you were, like went out to the parking lot for part of it? I, I when they were down fifteen, I went out to the parking lot to get my wallet at Buffalo Wild Wings. I, this was in two thousand five, mm-hmm. and that was a great year for Chicago, by the way. Illinois White Sox and the Bears went to the Super Bowl in oh five oh six, but um the. I, I came back and all of a sudden it's like holy shit they're only down fucking eight, and then it was steal three, steal three. Luther had D Brown, Darren Williams. It was just unbelievable. It's my favorite basketball game that I've ever watched. Oh, without question, for sure. And then people forget his name was I. It was Mustafa Shakur. He he rimmed out at the buzzer yeah. that would have because Illinois won by two. It was a three point shot. It toilet bowled and it was almost a game winner for Arizona at yeah. the very last second at the buzzer. Rico, you have a college basketball podcast. I mean, what well, one of the best tournament games of all time? Mm-hmm. It's been Without drafted. Doubt. Drafted in well, the um, Arizona yeah, was solid. a three seed. No identical right? circumstances. Dave drafted it right before me in yeah, like yeah. A, in a, in the March Madness draft, and then he told the similar story with like no connection. It was all over the place. <laughs> no, it was, there, it was there's a couple a wild wings. I mean, fucking half my friends went to Illinois. My brother went to Illinois. Like Illinois, like I don't hate Illinois. At just because I'm a Northwestern fan, like Illinois. Is, our state mm-hmm. flagship school. Like I, I mean, everyone them was win. an Illinois fan that year. Everybody was an Illinois fan. I didn't miss a game. That was like, yeah. there and basketball is not you know my favorite, obviously. But there's there wasn't a, a, a Illinois game I missed that year. I remember I was in the Florida Keys and I watched them play Wake Forest and they just beat the fucking shit out of Chris Paul. Is that when your dad beat about met OJ? Thirty. Yeah. Yeah. It was. When your it dad was. met OJ, Mr. William Williams yep. met OJ. <laughs> Uh, Carl, any thoughts about that? He upset? was singing "Brown Eyed Girl" by Van, Van Morrison. No, I can tra- <laughs> I can trans <laughs> I can transition this. Just tell the story. Yeah, guys. tell the story. Just tell the fucking story. We were at a bar. In, <laughs> you ever heard this story? Have you heard this one? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my dad, my mom, my uh, it, there was a bunch of us on this vacation. It was like multiple families went, and um, my dad was lit up with his buddy Don. And they're all shit faced and, and Don and my dad, like Don, Don. approached him because he saw him walk in. He God. said he was singing Brown Eyed Girl. I, I don't remember that part physically, but it's part of the story. But um, the wives freaked out on the on the dads for shaking his hand and everything. And it was a big deal. And it caused a big family rift because they shook hands with uh, axe murder. And we're like laughing about the story. They're like, hey, there's there's OJ. He was fucking awesome. He rushed for two thousand yards in a fourteen game NFL season. Only player to ever do that. Florida Keys, William Williams, OJ Simpson, Van Morrison, Just Brown Eyed Girl. He was fucking hammered. The handshake heard round the world. And I, I wish I was there. I always forget, but what does this have to do with what we were this has to do with the Illinois game or 
How did this come up? Well, because I that's where I think I watched the Wake Forest game. Or that's that where is, I watched it. It was I was November? in the Keys. The same. Or December fifth. I was two thousand four. I, I that was in February. I was there. <laughs> no, it was in December. December. Illinois <laughs> played Wake Forest in December. I swear I was in the Florida Keys for that game. Here's a shout out. I was on Kairos. That anybody come for the uh, Jesus Christ debate. Christ debate stay for the White Sox day of uh, Florida Key vacation. <laughs> <and recap. laughs> December first, two thousand four. Um, Great maybe game. It wasn't that, maybe it wasn't. They beat the shit out. I watched Illinois playing the Florida Keys. Is the point I remember that year, and. Um, because I you wouldn't miss a game. That's how that's how entertaining that team was to watch. Brown so. girl. Great pick, Dave. Carl. All right. Well, I'm in a tough spot. I shouldn't have said anything to add about this series. I should just let you draft that and I should have just so that's my that's my fault. I, I should not be throwing wrenches into the system like that. Because then you take the Red Sox Yankees and and it just moves just moves the conversation along. So Adam, sorry. It's all right. Uh, Dave, you put me in a position to make this pick. I wasn't going to make this pick out of respect to Ed because I wanted to apologize. I have to take the Red Sox Yankees in my miscellaneous category. It is the greatest yeah. comeback. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to take it because I thought I'd be able to take Illinois, Arizona in the first round, and that that's very worthy of the first round, a very personal pick. But uh, Dave, for like every time we have this opportunity to draft Illinois, Arizona, Dave always hijacks. It. I mean, it's not that I hijack it; it's that it it's it's such a important part of our lives. I know you went to Illinois. I know it's very near and dear to you. It's that it's, I have to take it. You also. That'd be like me taking Mark Burley. You also like, well, had the opportunity to. to pick fourth and you pick fifth. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I got it. I, I had a strategy. It okay. put together. Mm. Um, I did take this off the board, but now it's back on the board because of White Sox Dave. So I'm taking Red Sox Yankees in the 3 0 comeback. Okay. Yeah, I just don't think, like, I mean, living in that moment, like it was so impossible. And yeah. then when they did it, it was like, holy fuck, man. What a moment! What a series! Mm. It's like what? How long was their uh, drought? Was it a hundred years? Did it hit a hundred? They were. Uh, it was nineteen eighteen to two thousand four. Because they're always eighty six. Okay, friend no, was older, wasn't. but that's where I always fuck that up. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, eighteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So okay, eighty something years. Yeah, and they've won four total since then. Yep. Seven. <clears throat> Thirteen. 13 and 18, they won it. Yeah. Because they hit, yeah, against I, the Dodgers. I always forget about the 18 one for some reason, but yeah. Miscellaneous a, pick in the first round. Not not the smartest strategy here. Deepest category because yeah. it's the most flexible, but I want it on the board. It's worthy, though. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where it's at. So, All right, you're up again. Second round, this is uh, very easy. I want him on my board very badly. I'm taking Josh Hamilton. Josh Hamilton, Great. right out of the meth lab, right into the 2006 home run derby. One of the all, I mean, just or was it 07? What year was it? Then he ended up signing like a $140 million contract. Yeah. Uh, it was 09, I think. Wait. Jo I mean, what a sweet story, too. Yeah, the, the fucking flame tattoos on the forearms. Like, he looked like a meth head. Yeah. That was oh, like, yeah. I gotta mm -hmm. go back and play baseball. I don't have a choice. I have no money. Yeah, like, I'm fucking I'm oh, dead. He was oh, so highly thought of that there was talks of him being a sort of Shohei Otani. Because he, he was well, he he throws fucking 197 too. miles off yeah. the mound. I will guarantee you when he was playing for the Rangers, he could have come in and bumped 101, 102. If you want to, Easily. sure. He's like the most naturally gifted, one of them, I should, not the most, but one of the most naturally gifted baseball players of all time. He was, was he the first overall pick? Yes. He was first overall pick. Obviously, he had but his But part issues. of that yeah. had to do with being able to sign. But he was, he was a highly regarded high school prospect. The great thing about his comeback story is – uh, relative to other comeback stories, is like you know, he, it's all self harm. It wasn't mm -hmm. like he had like a bad collision or like was unlucky. He just went through some really heavy shit and was like, you know what, I I gotta fulfill my stuff. And then um, you know, tell Josh Hamilton, Jesus isn't real, Chief. <laughs> all right, that guy hit like fucking <laughs> two hundred fifty home runs on the back of Jesus Christ. You could say the word of God is real. Mm -hmm. So Josh Hamilton, <laughs> I'm. I'm I'm not turning this into a religious debate <laughs> show. Josh Hamilton, second round. Okay. I like yeah, the pick. Perfectly, perfectly good pick. Um, did I, he get in trouble again? Then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He was bumping yeah, coke off bad. of. Uh, that's too bad. I think that's called a re. He had a relapse. Or no, was it? Be, be, be professional. Was he had a relapse, it? Relapse, David. Coke? There was something like body shots he was doing off a stripper or something, and there was cocaine or something. I remember hearing he only carried in his wallet $10 at all times. I remember hearing that. And didn't he have a guy that, like, traveled with yeah, him? Yeah, he had to like, have a guy with him at all to, times. To, like, make yeah. sure, like, he wasn't out doing yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, fucking 
addiction's a motherfucker so yeah i mean it's tough yeah. um yeah but that was such a big story too like him just in the home run derby like they always mm-hmm. shine also light very on that cool, very cool when they won sorry eddie no well, i know about gone. the ten dollar thing i was gonna say too very cool was he with the rangers uh yeah they went the to the world series Right, and the ginger the teammates had the ginger ale instead of the champagne. Yeah, so yeah. That was pretty cool. Nice, yeah. Nice gesture. Uh, Josh I Hamilton, would have had champagne pick. personally. Um, White Sox, Dave, you're up. Um, I am going to go right back to the athlete category. I'm going to go with Mike Vick. The, wow. So don't you, you, you've taken him multiple yeah. times too, I feel like, haven't you? Maybe. What, how's that not a comeback? Well, why, uh, Rico, you made a no- I mean, I'll, I'm just saying, if I fucking took this, I'd be kicked out of the room. <laughs> I don't. Interesting spin. I don't condone what he did at all. Mm-hmm. But I will say that it does truly seem like the, um, the prison system actually did its job for once, and he did come out rehabilitated uh, and a better person. <laughs> but, what? I mean, he... He he does seem like a genuinely good dude at I'm this point. I'm not saying he yeah. doesn't seem, but for you to be like the, they finally did their job one time, like what do you know about the American justice system? I mean, like, I, is. <laughs> do we have to go into all I that? I know, but so it's we're a not going to. We're talking about Mike Vick. He I, also first overall pick, right? Yes, first overall pick. Yep. Um, fucking Madden and all that. Like he was the guy. Goes to prison for what two years? Comes back and he was. Unbelievable when he came back. Mm, he, he wasn't had, the same, dude. He had that one game for Philly where he had like 360 pass yards, four touchdowns, and he ran for like 180. Oh yeah, two yeah. Mo- I, I think yeah. it's probably like, but he he was awesome for a fucking hot minute. Take away awesome. the controversy, it's probably one of the best NFL comebacks because it's so hard to come back in the NFL. Like once you leave the NFL, like yeah. especially like, at that position. Like, oh yeah. hey, gee Correct. whiz, we need a Rico. You made a, you grunted when he made that pick. You don't like it, huh? I was interested to hear the spin zone. Uh, I guess, I mean, I guess I still think people, like, ultimately you bring that name up and a lot of people will still be like, oh, Mike Vick, like, no, nah, I don't like him. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I and I, uh, I would never argue with anybody who said they don't like him. He fuck what he did was heinous and he deserved what he got. Yeah. My, my only and thing. And he came out better on the other side. As a, as a human. Yeah. Yeah. And as, I mean, as a football player, he, he was, he yeah, was. Stat wise, he was pretty fucking good looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was awesome for that year. Threw for three thousand yards, twenty-one uh, TDs, uh, six interceptions. How many rushing uh, yards? Rushed for six hundred and seventy-six. Good year. Nine rushing touchdowns. So that's pretty. I mean, how many years is he the full-time starter in Philly? Um, I, it, see, he never played a full season. It looks like, but he was there for five years. Okay. But he started. I thought his first year back, he he was uh, coming in for McNabb. Yeah. McNabb was winding down his I career. think it was week one, and McNabb got hurt. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, Vic and was... okay, that was the first year he threw for 3,000 yards and everything Ed said. The next year he threw for 3,300 yards. Second year, because first year he didn't play much in 09. Yeah, he yeah. had 12 starts, yeah. then 13 starts back-to-back. Regardless, then. interesting pick. I, can you admit if I would have taken this, it would have been spot? No, I, I was hoping that you would take it. I would have yeah. shit Ed. all over you, of course. Was, yeah. But you don't like dogs. That's different. Well, Eddie thinks the prison system doesn't work. Go get, go check out what was their website for Fuzzy? <laughs> yeah, yourfuzzy.com. Go to yourfuzzy.com. Your fuzzy. Thank you. Don't, take you care of your dog. Take, take care, care of all dogs. He was second in offensive player of the year in 2010. Yeah. In a Pro Bowler. That's, that's Not that bad. Pro Bowls mean shit. Um, all right. Average David, 250 it, yards passing a game. He was fucking awesome that year. David, no, uh, interesting pick. Edward. Uh, all right, back to me. I'm going. Uh, I'm going fashion. I'm going fashion. Taking mm. John Wayne Casey. <laughs> no, I'm going fashion. I'm going to go with Chuck Taylor's. Uh, Converse Chuck Taylor brand was a dead dog at one point. Nike bought them. Uh, now you can't go throughout the summer without seeing chicks wearing these things. I mean, yeah, they became moves. like a dad shoe to a fucking like sorority chick shoe. This yeah. is going to be a tough category for me. Chucks are awesome. Why? I don't know shit about fashion. Neither do I. Did you like, ever have a pair of Chucks? I had one when I was a kid, and I rolled my ankle, so I got Th- rid of them. I, That's why I never wore them, because yeah. they, they were too flimsy. Bad ankle support. Yeah, no, that was a thing. Like we, we got. I remember when I was a little kid, my dad took me to Sport Mart and was like, you're getting your you're getting your first pair of Chucks yep. now. And I was mm-hmm. like, because he always he wears them all the time to this mm-hmm. day. Like mm-hmm. he's, That's all the guy wears. He just has low-cut Converse All-Stars. And uh, now it's a big fitness thing. People wear them at the gym if you're doing really? like powerlifting or something. 
there's the high tops. Yep, there's right. something about it's like a the ankle stability, and then b it's good to have your feet as like close to the floor as possible when you're doing these power. This is I, I'm not saying I do this. I'm mm-hmm. just saying this is like a trend. Well, it's good because you'll see people like lift power lift barefoot so that their feet are as close to the floor and you like engage your foot muscle more or something. You're right. And because Converse are so thin, mm. like power lifters like using them for ankle stability and because of fear are close to the floor. Well, we mm-hmm. learned something today. Hmm. Oh, yeah. They yeah. dominated the shoe market from the 20s to the 70s and when they struggled, uh, Nike bought them in 2003 for 305 million. That feels like a bargain. Oh yeah. Custom chucks, you can yeah. now you can go online and. Like they're huge now. Yep. Um, did anybody else have that on their board? Yeah, that was my second. Was it? My second. Your number two. Now I'm kind of nervous. Fashion. Why? That's a good pick, right? Yeah, I think it's a really good pick. Yeah, I would have gone another fashion over it, but it, it, I won't argue against Chuck's. But to Carl's point, like my dad still wears them. Mm-hmm. He would take me to Coles or wherever the fuck you get Chuck Taylors at, and be like, "Hey, you're getting Chuck's." Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was like seven years Did old. Did he call yeah. him Chuck's? Yeah. All right, because I, I, that's cool. I think that's cool. Rico, any thoughts? Good, good, good uh, fashion's a weak category, so anything that you could be like, oh yeah, that makes sense, um, works. So I, I like it. I wasn't on my, I'm weak with fashion, so I, I, I compliment it. Mm-hmm. All right, then, uh, Chief, you're up. All right, I'm gonna dip back into the same back from the dead pool. I'm going fiction again, <laughs> and I'm taking Jon Snow. So Jon Snow, that moment where he had his own resurrection with that red bitch brought him back to life <laughs> that was like a holy shit like internet moment i feel like everybody in the whole country like let out a gasp just like john snow did at the exact same time like he's back you know the north the north remembers and uh you know so when they stabbed him in the back he was betrayed like he was caesar and then came back from the dead and he's like i'm still in charge all you guys are hung uh and that to me was probably like the last truly like great season of game of thrones and that was a great moment so fictional character Jon Snow. Dave Dave. doesn't like it. I I don't dislike it, but you said, holy shit, I think the entire world knew exactly what was going to happen in the very opening scene the next episode. But it it was way towards the end of that episode, if you remember. It wasn't the opening scene. It was like the last scene. When they stabbed him? No, no, no. When he came back. When he came back. I think you're incorrect there. No, they had a whole play out. They had... well, I'll go back and rewatch it. But I just rewatched it like a month or it's six him weeks ga- ago. It's him opening his eyes and gasping for air, and, and then I think, cuts the credits. Right, it's the last scene. That's, that's no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But when they pick up the next episode, then oh, okay, does, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yes, they, yes, they yes. go back a little bit. But before everybody him knew because the Red Witch had done it, and she was at Winterfell, so everybody knew the Red Witch was just going to resurrect him. Yeah. Well, she she had a little bit of a tough track record up to that point with her different spells. She it was like one for three. <laughs> But you knew it was going to happen. You, Still a great fucking yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love Jon Snow. You didn't seem like you loved that pick. I think it's good he came back from the dead. I think it's a good comeback. I think it just, anytime you talk Game of Thrones, and, and we know this now in the draft position, when you draft Game of Thrones, get ready for it because there's so many people that feel emotionally like let down by how that show ended. And so people have very strong opinions. I know. Very yeah. strong opinions. And well, they'll say, they'll. They'll take the first. They'll take that moment, John Snow, and they'll say it's devalued because he ends up the, the show sucks at the end. But I, I think I think it's fine. I just that that is lurking in the internet. I do know that, and I I thought about that, but then it's like you know, until the end when they fucked up the end, it was considered the greatest show maybe of all time, and then it was certainly in the discussion. People were having that discussion. Oh, yeah. And then they it still should even with that fucking end ending. And I'm gonna start a campaign to push back against it, because like, that show for what six and a half years was fucking awesome, and that was an awesome TV moment. And Jon Snow is a great character, so uh, I think got to stick the landing. Got to stick the landing. It's it. not many TV shows have that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I'd well. say Breaking Bad has, and that's it. Ed, have you yeah. ever watched? Did you ever watch a show of? Have you ever watched a full episode of Game of Thrones, Ed? I've seen. The oh, whole he thing. went through really? the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did the it, rewatch. Yeah. You did a rewatch. Yeah. Good um, for you. Okay. And it, this is not. This shouldn't be a con against you, but the only problem that I have with it is so many people like me binged it. You already kind of knew that it happened, so I wasn't caught off guard. But that's not. That's not. You know. That's just the way society views yeah. mm-hmm. TV now. now. Yeah, well, so. it's all catered to Ed, who watched things eight years too well, late. Well, I'm just saying, a lot of people were in the same shoes. A lot. Um, Jon Snow. Rico, Big waste you're of up. time. What'd you say? Big waste of time. <laughs> Big waste of time. He's right. Like, a good show, horrible ending. It was ultimately like a big waste of time. 
I felt like uh, like I wasted my time. Yeah. I hear you. Well, you're up again. See, I don't Rico. think you did waste your time. You you what you enjoyed no, I, 90% of the show. No, I didn't. I didn't enjoy it because I like I'm bad with the names. So like I knew Dragon Lady and Parketti and the Heads and a Bad Guy. I I didn't really like I wasn't diehard. So it was okay. a big waste of time. Um All right, we're uh I'm going to go let me get my big board up here. All right, game is is another easy one. I thought Carl was talking about this when he was saying don't get picked away with the Red Sox. I got to go game six, Mets, Red Sox, bottom of the 10th inning, two outs, uh, nobody on. Kevin, uh, who gets the first hit? Gary Carter. Kevin Mitchell comes out, coked up. He gets a hit. Uh, Ball gets gets passed, obviously. Ball gets passed, Buckner, Mookie Wilson, like legendary. Uh, My grandfather was at the game. Uh, probably one of the last games he went to before he died with my dad. So obviously some things get to hear that story all the time. Maybe the greatest comeback of all time in a singular game. They were dead, dead, huge favorites, dead, come back and win it. I'll got to go with that. White Sox, Dave. Don't hate it. Chief. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the most famous games Mm -hmm. in, in baseball history for sure. So, and like Buckner is synonymous with, fucking up because of that moment kind of ruined the guy's life uh so yeah, yeah. i think it's a worth a worthy pick buckner yeah I, I, it's uh it's a good pick and uh buckner did give it away but i know you rico's a diehard mets fan really is a good you're a good mets fan and i you should have a good if this is not if, knowing who you are this has to be on your board. personal family tie yeah you got I, it all. I just also think i mean big like biggest comebacks in baseball you can't find five more than this in a single in a single 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 game with with the stakes as high as they were. It's, it's I think it's the best baseball comeback of all time. I think yeah. you, you have to take it. Grabbing three in the bottom of the tenth, you know. So what? prior to what the Buckner play, there was a drop third strike, and the catch it was a fucking strike. The catcher just dropped it and went to the backside and extended the inning. And I'm blanking on his name, but he was my buddy's uh, manager in Lowell, Massachusetts, and he told us the story. He's like, dude, there's not a day I don't wake up where I don't think like I should be getting the Buckner treatment. I'm fucking blanking on it. I'm trying to look it up right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's – I mean, they'll be playing that replay of Buckner getting that, you know, forever five hole for forever. It's synonymous with baseball. Yeah, there's a lot to it too. Mm-hmm. The only reason they put Buckner in, like they kept Buckner in, is because they they thought they had the game in the bag. He was supposed to come out. He's at the end of his career. They usually go defense for offense. Like, it's there's a lot to that crazy crazy game. And I, I mean, that's truthful. Like you may not know the story. Uh, it's obviously in the documentary, but I knew it from the book and from my dad reading the Sports Illustrated article years later. Or a year right after, I mean, years ago, uh, Kevin Mitchell was naked in the in the locker room booking his flight. They called him up in mid October, and like he, so then get this, he roomed with the guy. They told this in the documentary, but I had I knew it. He roomed with the guy who was the pitcher, and he was in the middle of a slump. And he's like, "How would you get me out?" He's like, "Easy, fastball, like up or whatever. You never swing at the first pitch, and then slider away." Kevin Mitchell remembered and hit the slider away, poked it out. It starts the whole thing. So it's just the game is fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. You're up again, Rico. All right, fictional. I mean, Chiefs pumping John Snow and his fucking dragons and all this. I mean, how about my boy Simba takes back the fucking kingdom? Goes and <laughs> makes friends with a warthog and uh, I don't even know what the, uh, where the fucking whatever. Simba's banished, takes down his uncle, fictional. Simba, baby, gets the fucking – and listen, I'm friends with White Sox Dave again. I hope he forgives me. Nala's got those fuck me eyes, man, and you celebrate. Nobody's brought into the She sunset does. Without fucking. And that has Simba, nothing to so. do. Um, that has nothing to do with you thinking Nala's hot or wanting to bang Nala. She just <laughs> objectively looks at Simba like, "Please fuck me right yeah. now." Yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta have callbacks in these drafts, you know. You but like, what's what's higher than that? Like fucking, you, you know, Josh Hamilton never got that high. You take down your fucking uncle, you come back, save the and kingdom, you're riding off in the sunset with Nala, yeah. Yeah, take him back, on. Pride Rock. That was a big moment. Turned it back to lush and green, and all mm-hmm. the animals are happy. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Mm. That's a good fictional pick. Good pick. Because, you know, he was uh, he was, he was was a Kuna Matata with Tim, Timon and Pumbaa. What yeah. is Timon? 
He's a meerkat. A meerkat? Yeah. Uh, okay. Meerkat. Yep, meerkat. Remember that at meerkat before Periscope? Remember that? Mm, no? Vaguely. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't no. think I do. Yeah, they lost out. That should have been the technology bus draft. Um, I like the pick a lot, Rico. Great pick. Uh, yeah, very good pick. Simba takes back Pride Rock. Um, Rico's fixing those off the board. Chief, it's back to you. Uh, Tiger Woods. So for, for athlete, you know, the greatest golfer who ever lived, in my opinion, obviously had all the off – off the course, off the field, whatever you want to call it. Issues, 10 years, I think it was, between major victories, 09th, and then he won the Masters in 19. Like, I don't think you could have, like, a longer gap between being on top than Tiger Woods. So I think Tiger Woods has to be drafted in this draft. I'm happy to get him in the in the third round. Yeah, he was going to get drafted. Uh, I was between him and something else, and I'm the last one to get an athlete. So. Mm-hmm. Um, good pick. I mean, he was a fucking yeah. A lot of people thought he was a dead dog too. I did, and then there was like I mean, the whole thing like Tiger's back, Tiger's back, and he was never back. Mm-mm. He was never back. Oh, he's he was having, missing cuts and shit, and he, he never missed cuts. missing yeah. cuts, having knee surgery, having back surgery, you know, all, drinking all, and all all yeah. sorts of issues, all sorts of issues, and then he kind of got himself all cleaned up, at least enough temporarily, it seems like, to uh, to be able to come back and win the Masters. So. Tiger and Tiger in nineteen. I mean, that was like that was one of the biggest stories in sports that year. You know how uh, like everybody's got it carries. A- uh, it carries. Sorry, it carries so much more weight that it was the Masters. Mm-hmm. And what's For crazy sure. is, Chief, you might in, if he wins another one, we might have oh Tiger Volume Two come back. Yep. You know what I mean? Like nothing's off the table, but yep. yeah, being the if he won the fucking British Open, it wouldn't matter that much. The fact that he won the Masters carries that much more weight. Right. Yeah, definitely agreed. agreed. The I was gonna say the everybody's got that like a personal, like they'll they'll think of something and it's only funny to them and they'll think about it randomly and just start laughing with themselves and people are like what the fuck you're laughing at and you just like don't worry about it it's nothing. Every here and there, a couple times a year, I'll think about how Riggs and Trent met Tiger. Like it was after the he won the Masters to complete the comeback. Yeah, and Riggs is like, yeah, man, congrats on the Masters. And and Trent pulled the Paul McCartney. Um, that Chris awesome. Farley is like that was awesome, <laughs> and he's just so fucking starstruck, <laughs> and that's what came out of his mouth, and it's just like Trent, god damn it, <laughs> he's just like that was awesome. <laughs> um, great pick, Tiger Woods, mm. Tiger Woods. Um, all right, I need my third pick right now. Before I make my third pick, though, we do have to talk about an advertiser for the show, mm. and it's Roman. Okay. Now, what can you tell me about Roman, uh, Carl? Roman is discreet. In a clinically proven way to make sure that you last longer in bed, if you go to getroman.com backslash dog walk, you get $5. You get your first month of swipes for just $5, and they send you a lot of swipes. When you choose a monthly plan. When you choose a monthly plan. How'd I do? You did really good. You did really good. Hit all the points. It's like like you've done that before. Once Mm -hmm. or twice. And and it's so discreet. I put a Roman in each one of your wallets. You guys didn't even know. No, I didn't know. Did you do that? Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Like without taking it out of my back pocket? Yep. Just snuck it in there. You know, William Williams can uh, remove his underwear with pants on still. Wait, really? What? Hold on No, I think it's an Abe Simpson thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, but Roman's the best, Ed. Oh, Roman is the best. It really is. Stop using those methods of, you know. You like to uh, like, like memorize uh, the each stroke tiger head in his yes and i can't do that anymore i right, needed you know, something each, clinically each proven. thrust starts with his sunday round at the masters yeah tee shot on one can't do that it doesn't work i need a clinically proven mm-hmm. way to last longer in bed and that's roman so hey, go no. to get roman sock doc get roman.com slash dog walk get your first month of swipe for just five dollars when you choose a monthly plan let's get roman.com slash dog walk go uh up the sex game um all right it's to me i need a uh a third round pick i'm gonna go with my fictional here um I got to fucking, you know, tip my cap at the uh, the Toon Squad coming back against the Monstars. That was not an easy game. They were down. I'm looking Excellent at the – What would you say? Excellent pick. Yeah. I'm wasn't look, on my board. Excellent pick. I'm looking at the scoreboard right now. At one point, the scoreboard was uh, 68 to 18. And then they changed it to what kind of one-sided, isn't it? They were getting their dick speed in, Dave. 50 points is a hell of a comeback. Huge. If you ask me, Ed. Big. Huge. Yep. Huge. Uh, 
they were getting slapped around. Tweety Bird was getting smacked. It was it was a bloodbath. It was a bloodbath till fucking Newman came in. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think that's one of the ultimate comebacks in fictional <laughs> categories. Great, so. Yeah, great pick. Could you have taken that as a game? I, I thought about it, but I assume people would have vetoed it, so I didn't do it. Okay. Um, but I'm happy to have the two squad. Toon Squad versus the Monstars, great movie. I uh, love Space Jam. Um, so shout out to the Toon Squad. Get great comeback against those cheaters. Uh, White Sox, Dave, you're up. I'm going fashion for this round. I'm going with short shorts. They're back in. I remember when I was like in elementary school and middle school, if my shorts didn't, even like basketball shorts weren't around the house, if they didn't go below my knees, then I was like afraid to let people see me. And now if they go below my knees, I'm like, I'm a social pariah. They made it come back, Ed. Mm -hmm. short there, there's limits to that, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm not wearing fucking whitey tighties and calling them shorts. I, but I, was, I got a lot of heat for uh, my attire at the uh, roller hockey tournament, the Chicklets Cup. The, did you? Let's yeah. see. Let Were me, they let that me short? They're like they're like those Lululemon ones that don't really seem that short when I'm wearing them like normally, but when you're doing athletic things, they had a tendency to you know rise up a little bit. Did and a ball make an appearance? No balls made an appearance, but it, it had John Stockton vibes for sure. <laughs> Which was an odd, it was an odd look. I can admit that. Oh, I think I saw that guy's balls. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Mass. No, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's great. Uh, you like when uh, cons wear short shorts, Dave? I think Cons rocks the short shorts as well as anybody. Yeah, these yeah. are a little like these are probably a little too short that's, for that's, me. But that's a trigger. That's uh, <laughs> that is. I mean, you're playing hockey. Like, who gives a shit? I don't give a shit. I'm just saying. That there was a lot of comments yeah. about that. Yeah, you're right. No. Short shorts. Nice but yeah, short sport. Like, if you look at a 2005 like Bulls versus Pistons game. Like, Iverson's got shorts that are down to his fucking ankles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you look at a basketball game, college or pro, a lot of guys are wearing, like, the John Stockton style mm -hmm. short shorts. Not that short, though, right? Not quite as short, like a, but, yeah. short, I mean, much shorter. Like uh, It's going to come back even more at some point, for sure. Definitely. Like, it's, it's, it's if it's not here yet, it's coming. Uh, Carl, you're up. Um, okay, let's go fictional and give me um, give me Rocky too. Give me Rocky Balboa. Give me give me a guy who just like he did it. He fucking did it, Adrian. He came back. He had a fight righty, huge disadvantage. You know, he goes fourteen rounds. He's just getting his fucking dick smashed in by Apollo Creed. You go the whole it, it, up into that point in the movie franchise. There's really nothing to celebrate here other than other than fucking hard work. And uh, in Rocky Balboa in the second one in a final fight against Creed, I'm taking Rocky. Rocky two. The I want to take Rocky four, but there's really no comeback from that. That's a fair fight. That's mm -hmm. a fair fight through and through. He is a piece of iron. So the rematch was what makes it the comeback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll never shit on a Rocky pick. Why? Because like, I love Rocky. It's one of my favorites. I'm in a room with people who haven't seen it. No. 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 I think no, everybody's no. seen oh, it. Oh, it's excellent. Yeah. I like Rocky I've two seen better it than so one. Many I've seen, I've seen it so many times. I'm psyching myself out. He only fights Drago once, correct? Correct, correct. Yeah. Well, the Drago, last one. All right, so Drago, that's the yeah. He killed Apollo Creed. All right, Rocky <laughs> two. Uh, Carl, what's uh, what's your next pick? I there's hmm. There's two available here. I gotta go. Fa I have to. I need a fashion pick to compete with Ed. There's a more practical fashion pick, but I'm going to take something that competes with that. I'm going to take a starter jacket. Starter mm -hmm. jackets were gone for 20 years. Starter jackets are very hot. If you've looked at starter jackets now on eBay, the Hornets one goes for over $500 on eBay. Dude, it's... The uh, market for starter jackets, I was going to make a bet with TJ before the Illinois Rutgers game and be like, yo, we get to pick a starter jacket out. Whoever wins the game, Illinois got blown out. Thank God I didn't make the bet with TJ because then once I went online and looked, I was like, holy fuck. It would have been hundreds see, of dollars. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I'm not sending this kid a fucking $300 starter jacket. No offense, TJ, nice kid. Um, but starter jackets, I don't even know where they went. Just, Amazon sells new starter jackets for like $200 now. Just the abs and flows of fashion. Dude, those were the fucking hottest things. Like you had to have a starter jacket if you were considered cool. And yep. Grade school. Starter jacket fashion. Ed. That was sick. Dude, I, I'm so mad at myself, too, because I bought one from Goodwill in my freshman year of college, and I just completely just threw it out. Like, didn't even. You probably like, could have sold I it. I know. Yeah. Mm. And that's, a few hundred bucks. That's a regret. We have a sick balls one at my parents' house. I got an issue. Do you? Sick balls one. What? That was the only fashion one I had. Oh. Uh -huh. Sounds so, like you're in trouble, buddy. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't have like that one on my board, trouble. but that's a. I think it's a great pick. 
<laughs> You're in big trouble. Um, yeah, that's an awesome pick. Starter jackets are just there. And they've always been sick. I don't know why they just like disappeared for a while. Because there was something. There was a good period of time where it was like, yo, dude, it's not cool to wear like your fucking team logo on something. You know, like, I don't know if that's an age thing. Like, you just get to that age where you're, like, 18 years old. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm going out to the bars. I'm not. I think it's weird to wear Or is it, like, a generation now. thing that happened to us? Maybe. I had a San Jose Sharks one. Oh, that probably popped. That that old teal that they That's used to have. pretty sick. But yeah. you might have had that it's too early. Random. Like, if you had that, if you were in college now and you had, like, a fucking teal San Jose Sharks jacket, like, you'd be the sickest, too. But was that cool when you were in college? Well, it was it was black. It was, it was predominantly black. But, uh... I mean, I, it was just kind of like I was a kid. Like it was when I was, but I was like, I was wondering like what made my parents buy me a Sharks <laughs> starter jacket. You know? Yeah. But whatever. Um, Fins and Tam Foos. I yeah. loved them. Yeah. Hey, let's speed it up so we got to get back to Chief while he doesn't have a fashion pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> White Sox, Dave, you're up. All right. So for the miscellaneous category, I think a lot of people are just going to dip into the other four categories and, and kind of double up on a pick. <laughs> For this one, I went way outside the box. I'm going when Ham Porter told the kid from across town that you play ball like a girl, and they all just were like, oh, oh. different definition of a comeback. So Ham Porter telling whatever the fuck his name is, you play ball like a girl. That was the perfect comeback for a perfect movie. You've come so far from drafting Jesus in the fight draft. Really? Yeah, yeah I th- that's, I still, a that's a very good pick, yeah. Dave. I I still contend that you wouldn't want to fight Jesus, someone that you know can work miracles. Dude, you bomb that you bomb that argument like a year ago. Don't come back to it. <laughs> yeah, just stick with this. This is well, a great. Yeah, no, you play ball like a girl, Ham Porter. Am I back? Yeah, you're yeah. back. You sound great, Rico. <laughs> I'm upset. So I'm speaking about comebacks. That scene when they ride up on the bicycles. That's probably mm-hmm. the best scene in Sandlot. It's one of them for when sure. You, when you yeah. think about, so like, many. I know, but when you think about the best one, Ed. Because the, the game that follows when it's like, well, yeah, they cut in And they the, just beat the shit the out of them, and then they great. do the... And and him do, talking do, 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 all do. that shit behind the plate as a catcher. Yeah. Like, hey, is it your sister out there? Yeah. Naked? We good? Yeah, could you hear us? We good? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm getting I'm getting a little upset that I, I thought I hid some of my own tricks. Like, I, I taught you guys a lot, like... With these snake drafts, I've clearly given you the whole playbook because now I, I thought Chief was going to be the one. He, he thought outside the box with Jesus. White Sox Dave stealing my special knuckleball. This is getting <laughs> snake drafts. This is a level playing field. I thought I kept some stuff hidden from you guys as, like, the expert. This is now a level playing field. Everybody's got all the bag of tricks. Did, so it's did, good. It's like the mess. Did Rico, did you just call yourself the expert when we've done, like, 107 of these and you've done three? He's done more than three. Experts oh, he's done like, like five. Experts five of the plus. Tricks. He did Expert it. of the tricks. I'm I mean, he did when he pulled out the, the, trick guy. the New Testament. That was like, that was a revolutionary moment. In I should say that those history. were yep. both on my board that day. <laughs> As sure was they World were. War II. Run the tape. It, that's well, fiction because like you can't prove it. Life, you, I can, yeah, you can't prove it. Much I can, like I can life, prove it. I can prove it. I'll go back to the notebook and find it. Did you... No trigger. Did anybody watch Euphoria here? I don't. They had an awesome chase scene where they were she was, they were trying to get her to go to rehab and like hey, it was spoilers. the best the best chase scene I've seen since the beast took down the town and the oh sandlot. really that's a great scene too. yeah you're point. right the chase scene is yeah. the chase scene's great it's awesome what do they play they play wipeout yeah. that's the song you know what <laughs> you know how <laughs> fucked up baseball is right now. MLB Net is playing like the same four movies all the time. So I'll flip over just out of habit to MLB Net to see what that asshole Chris Rose has to say or something. And the Sandlot will be on. They've been playing it so much that I'm like kind of sick of it. Mm. And it's not like it's any other point in my life. I've been like, oh, Sandlot's on. I got to watch it. Except for now. Fucking assholes are ruining the Sandlot for me. Yeah. Good pick, David. That was then that was a golden age for childhood baseball movies. Sandlot, Little Big League, Rookie of the Year. Year. And uh, what was the other one? Little big leagues where they managed it. Twins, Angels right? in the outfield. Angels in the outfield, yeah. Yeah, Love yeah, yeah, yeah. Good pick. Um, all right, it's back to me. I need an athlete. I need a miscellaneous. I'm between a couple things here for miscellaneous. Um, this is another one, like Dave, outside the – it hasn't been drafted yet, so it's not crazy outside the box, but um, 
I hope Carl appreciates. I don't think Dave will. Dave would uh, Chief will. I'm going to go with chicken fries from Burger King. <laughs> I mean, that was like such a big campaign, like Big Cat and uh, Press. Like they were like big behind that with Jared Lorenzen at <laughs> that one. Uh, was it the Big Ten Championship? I forget exactly what it was, but uh, BK needed chicken fries back, and that was a that was a big comeback for people that were BK squad. So, Rico, are you a, do you like chicken fries? I never ate them a lot, but I, the the memories of Lorenzen will always make me think of chicken fries. And uh, every once in a while, I bust them out in honor, you know. So, what the unique thing about chicken fries is the the container they get, they were served in. Because it was like uh, it was like the KFC popcorn filter yeah, yeah, box, yeah. but then you uh-huh. flipped it open and then you could hold the sauce in it. Mm-hmm. And then and the way that the chicken fingers, it was like a, it was like opening up a box of crayons. How they would they were stacked vertically, a very a very easy, very easy thing to eat. Now I don't remember when they made the comeback. Do you remember why they why all of a sudden chicken fries like why they got rid of them? I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the Wikipedia. Um, they were introduced in 2005. Uh, probably only lasts a couple of years then. Yes. Uh, there's too much to too much to read, but I just know it was a big deal, and for right rightfully so, chicken fries are good. Where does Jeff Delo stand on chicken fries as like a specialty offering? From that's a good question. Oh yeah, like here's the thing: following chicken fries discontinuation, there was a call for product reinstatement from fans. Reddit uh, uh, website we don't say anymore. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Perez Hilton, Daniel Tosh. There was a ton of shit. Um, that, it was discontinued January 2012. So there you go. Um, yeah, chicken fries, my pick. I assume you never had them, Chief. Burger King's been banned since 1987. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have uh, not had them. All right, Chief, it's to you. Well, about the Chief myself, because I'm going to go game here. And I just looked through. Um, an article from the athletic about greatest sports comebacks and they did like a top 40 and this game was not on there so i was between three but i'm going to go with the one that i have a vivid memory of and uh i'm going to take united states in the world cup 2010 against uh, oh, 10 or 14 i'm having a memory problem against algeria so like landon donovan 96 minute in stoppage time like scoring the miracle goal to put the united states through uh, another one that I feel like early internet. What are you giggling about? Nothing, nothing. You are giggling. Go get I'm to not, your giggle. I'm not, get to your I'm giggle. Not, get I'm to not, your giggle. I'm not. Continue. And that. So it wasn't on the. It wasn't on any of the, the list for the biggest comebacks or greatest comebacks. But I like. It was one of those things where like I remember where I was, and it was like a spectacular moment. It was like a great moment for like USA. It was like we haven't had like a ton of those in, uh, in in soccer. And that that to me was like a big 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 comeback moment to put the United States through at the end. Dave? Blank stares from Dave. Not a World Cup guy? I think that pick stinks. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew you would. Uh, I got nothing, Chief. I'm sorry. You guys don't Chief remember took, that? You took nope. soccer? I took soccer. Did you take you, soccer? Yeah, I took Wasted soccer. Wasted grass. I'm <laughs> glad my cold dropped out. Wasted grass. <laughs> Wasted grass. Soccer's great. Get on board, Rico. Um, so nothing. Blank stares around the can, room. I mean, you could reform me a little bit. You can't reform me on my morals. <laughs> you know, my dad used to throw away our sneakers on the way to football practice. We walked across the soccer field. Mm-hmm. You, I've heard, I've heard you say things like that before. You know, Rico, I like all sports. I like all sports. Soccer's one of them. I right. never wanted to play soccer, but if I would have, my dad would have told me no. He fucking hates that sport. Did you play soccer as a kid? Uh, a couple of years, and then football started. Yeah. Um. It, it was a spring sport until you got to high school. And then high school, it's a fall sport. Yeah. Right? Because well, so, I think you're like correct. Like yes. All like your, park yeah. league. Uh, do you, do you have anything? You're the next soccer guy, I would say. No, right? I think it's good. The, the, the only issue is they were, never, they were never trailing in the game, but they needed to win the game to go to the knockout stage. So it was like, oh, it was 0-0. Like, oh, fuck. Like, they're, we're not going to advance. They had to score a goal. They had to win. So it was. To come back, like, within the group. Yeah. 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 What they year made was it? Group stage. 2010. 2010. 2010. Okay. Uh, Carl, do you know why it's a full sport? No. Is there a joke here? I want to hear. Because, a high, well, for high school, yeah, because all 50 states, the boards of education felt so strongly about humility as like a life lesson that they decided those four kids playing soccer 
have to see the kids playing football and know like the humility of a second rate sport. So all 50 states mm -hmm. voted unanimously to make it a full sport. Just for a little fun fact, the Board of Regents there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a, I didn't know that. Interesting. Facts. Look it up. <laughs> Facts. Facts. All right, uh, Rico, back to you. You need a uh, miscellaneous and you need a fashion. All right, am I finishing out this draft? No. Oh, it goes the other way. All right. Yeah. So miscellaneous, I took, like I like the Sandlot one. I'm going to go a little more generic with miscellaneous. I'm just going to go with your mother. I think, uh, you know, like, hey, you suck. This pick sucks. Oh, yeah, your mother. Well, you know, <laughs> like, hey, you missed that shot. Oh, yeah, your mother. It's, I mean, it's just fucking great. You can chant it like one, two, three. Your mother, like student sections. I think it's the all-time comeback. It means nothing. Nobody knows what the fuck it means. But it's it's I, to me it's an all time comeback. Listen, people were upset with us for not taking uh, Joe Mama in the Joe draft, so I think yeah. this more than makes up with for it, right? Yeah. yeah, it's good. Your mother. Yeah, yeah, your mother. Do you like it more than Dave's pick? Mm, I don't. Well, no, no, Dave. Dave I've never has a said your mother. One. They're yeah. different picks. Like Dave, Dave is taking a specific moment where someone made a comeback. Rico's taking the all-time comeback. Is it the best comeback? It's up there. It's my own person. I just, I well, maybe my, I didn't consider comebacks that great. I guess. I mean, there's a few. You could say your sister's ass. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> no, it's a classic. Well, I'm not, your yeah, it's ass. a classic. Yeah, I'm not taking anything Those away from you. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of come. I mean, just yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I'm not taking I, anything yeah, away from want, you. Yeah, all right. I'm going to go with that. And then fashion, probably my weakest category. Uh, I had my – this is – I'm going to go with fucking – my brother and sister say baggy clothes are back. They're a little, little bit younger, but I don't give a shit. I'm going with, with tight clothes. In the 70s, like, Tony Monero had those skin-tight jeans and everyone was wearing tight – that shit came back for a little while here. Skinny jeans and tight shirts and the Abercrombie. Like, I feel like that all – especially now, everything's tight. Everything's tight. You can barely get your pants on. I'm going with tight clothes. Tight clothes made a big comeback. I I think it is Baggy's hot though now. I, I thought see, I heard that. I'm out of the loop. It looks like it. <laughs> it <laughs> looks looks like Baggy's in on TikTok. No, we did Crocs. You take Crocs and I fucking told nah. you. <laughs> My board, the boardroom is not happy. <laughs> I was. You think I blew the draft with what? Tight clothes. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, tight clothes. Anybody got any comments? I mean, I think it'll appeal to our our audience because I think our audience is just as behind as we are. Like, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying baggy clothes are in. I've heard baggy clothes are in. Like in doing research for this fashion wise, mm -hmm. it was like ooh, baggy this and that. But I'm more in line with Rico, where it's like when I go out, I see people in tight stuff. I'm like, well, that's tight. Like a lot of these people are wearing tight clothes around here. Yeah, Portnoy loves tight stuff. Portnoy. But he said he went to uh, it went, went vacation in Italy and came and was out there realizing that he looked like an idiot and needed to wear tight clothes. That's yeah. like the genesis of him. He's going like tight. that and, fucking and, episode of Seinfeld where they were Kramer and Mickey, the midget, and he's like yanking the jeans off of him, and his <laughs> legs are like two by fours where they don't bend. That's Portnoy. A lot of That's starch. too tight for me. Yeah. That's too tight for me. I mean, look at how, yeah, I mean, just look at how we dressed in high school like Echo fucking shirts and like. Jenkos. Uh, the guy's. Jenkos, yep. That guy's. No, no, not Jenkos. Echo. E C K O. It had a Rhino logo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we remember that too. Yeah. I was just giving you another example. Uh, dude, I had basketball jerseys that were like fucking double XL. You know what I mean? Like you, all like you were wearing baggy shit, and then in college, you were going to Arrow Pastel and fucking they were tight. Man. Yeah. I've heard Abercrombie in general is making a comeback. Maybe did you tell me that? We've talked about that. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, but Rico, Rhea, Rhea you, told us that. Rhea yeah, told us Rhea that. told us that. But Rico, you're absolutely right. Go look at an NBA draft uh, draft yep. night like group photo, and it's like all the Tracy McGrady's like uh, almost like MC Hammer pants. Like are the pants are so big, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Or that O three class. So yeah, you're definitely right about that. All right, Chief, you're up. Um. I don't know how smart this is because I just heard Marty say it and we've established that Marty has one brain cell, but I don't know any, I don't know dick about fashion. I think that's pretty obvious. Oh, but you're acting like you, we you do, and my sex Dave are, are fucking always talking about fashion. He's always just making fun of my fashion. But you guys are like, uh, you sure. are always telling him that you have better fashion than him and he's got better fashion than you. 
No, he he's just. It's not that I have good fashion. It's that I have, I think, very normal fashion, and Chief just dresses like a complete slop. Yeah, like yeah, like I wear. He's like, oh, I got these seventy-two pairs of Air Force Ones, and Jordan's this. I and like Jordan's to, that. I like to match. And I'm like, and like I, fine. Look. I got, I got Alberts. I'm, I'm good. That you wear for everything? Not for everything. Almost everything. I mean, I wear. Yeah, those I'm pink them now. shoes you got, you wore for, just like you cut the grass in them if you had a yard. I played golf in them. Yeah, I did everything yeah. with them. They're a good shoe. Oh, smell. <laughs> they and you were played fine. golf in those. Tom, yeah. Tom, would you consider Dave our fashion guy? A fashion expert? I don't think so. I I mean, don't know. Our fashion expert? Yes. A I don't, fashion a fashion expert? No. Well, you definitely not our fashion expert. <laughs> Who is Tom? You taking that title Probably for yourself? That fucking little twink Lance. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was, was he model. was a model. Yeah. So I'll take Crocs. I'd say Tom Crocs are more. back. I'd give it to Tom. Um, I think Tom is just cool. I don't know if he's fashionable. Tom, well, he Tom's wears not, he wears the uh, he wears the neon orange Dwight Trude hat emphatically, and it's like it, it works. I so think he does that because it's the only one that'll fit his big head. <laughs> <laughs> both, both are true. <laughs> um, tough pick, Chief. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm Crocs. Because that's the thing, though. Hey, what do you like, like about Crocs, or how did this? I don't. I don't like Crocs. Do you own a pair? I don't. I would don't you ever buy a pair of combat. Crocs? I probably would. I probably would wear them. Did but they, uh, were they, they dead? Did. Were yeah. they dead? Not I to, think they were pretty they, dead. That's a different thing. That That's like the Carhartt thing. They didn't make a comeback. They just like became popular. That's a good point. Okay, fine. Abercrombie. <laughs> Abercrombie's back. I, I, don't think I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stay in Abercrombie. For that's a it's sneaky, it's probably clear. one of the best ones. You're taking a brand, though. You got to say like. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm just being um, honest. Like I don't brands, think you do. I think so. Like there's brands. It's fashion. That, it's a it's a particular it's a look. fashion brand. Yeah. yeah, Croc. No Abercrombie. So wait, we're off Croc and on Abercrombie. I'm on Abercrombie. What did you draft? Abercrombie, Abercrombie and Fitch. I thought you wanted Crocs. I don't want Crocs. I want Abercrombie. My, my finger was on the piece. They told me I was getting like veto pushback that it's not going <laughs> to work. Didn't want to didn't want to go with it, so I'm going with Abercrombie. All right, he mailed it in anyways. Yeah, I don't know shit about it. fashion, but you act like we do. Yeah, I had starter jacket and it went early, fourth round, well, earlier than I was going to pay. Amber Crombie off the board. Uh, well, that's just bad drafting. Did you say yeah. Amber Crombie? I love Amber that. Crombie. Ad, I thought there's an M in there. Amber. I thought there's an M in there. Amber alert. I think it's Aber. No? It's Aber Crombie. I thought there was an M in there. I apologize. Mm. Um, Can't believe Ed. You, Ed. Ed. Aber, I was listening Aber to the Crombie. Portnoy show. They do call it. Eddie, they do call it Amber Crombie if a child lost in one of their stores, though, for the record. <laughs> that's that's a good point. <laughs> Those things scare the shit out of me, by the way. Did you think Thanksgiving was a religious holiday? No, Dave. That wasn't my point. But of you, that I have, I've had Thanksgiving dinners, in your defense, going to that quickly, where people say grace before yes, the meal. Yes, that was completely my point. I, I picked, I specifically picked a non-religious holiday right. to see if they brought religion into it. Hey, the Catholic Church embraces Thanksgiving, though. They do, yeah. but that's why everyone, people are like freaking out about that. It's crazy. They have Thanksgiving. It's crazy. I specifically picked a non-religious holiday to be like, oh, because obviously everyone knows people are super religious. They yeah. bring religion into everything. Correct. Like, if he was super religious, he would have done some type of thing. Right. So that was the point of the question. Of course, he fucking blows it up and mm -hmm. does his thing, but that's my point. Yeah. And that's um, referencing a Dave Port. What is that? Right? It was a question when someone asked if he, like, how, like, if how he Jewish was, is he? How On the Jewish Dave Portnoy show. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Go listen to it. Download so, yeah. It. That that explains. What do you that. think is the worst? What do you think is the worst holiday for someone to bring religion into? It's got to be Fourth of July. Yeah, you show up, you're hot, you're carrying fucking three pounds of sausage, and somebody's <laughs> like, "Hey, let's make sure we uh, pray before." You're like, "Hey, buddy, get the fuck out of here." Not We're today. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I don't know. This Halloween is a secular like a, holiday. Like, yeah. Get like a prayer card, <laughs> card as a kid on like Halloween or something. <laughs> oh, those are the worst. Exactly. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one too. Yeah, there's religions that don't let you dress up and they don't want you to do Halloween. It's crazy. Yeah, because it's. Uh, what, what are those um, called? Jo those the Jehovah's maybe. Witness? Could be. Yeah, they would give out cards in my neighborhood. Which, like, Halloween. that's even more to my question. But, um, all right, it's to me. I need my last pick. I need an athlete. This is, I mean, I don't know. People, it depends how young you skew, but this is one of my favorite movies. So this might tank me, but I'm going to go with James Braddock. I love the Cinderella. Oh, Man. yeah, it's a great movie. The guy was the heavyweight champ, hard times, Great Depression, had arthritis in his hand. 
uh, came back, beat Max Bear for the heavyweight championship. Returned that welfare money when he no longer needed it. Yeah, what a guy. Exactly. So I, uh, I fucking love that movie. Like I said, one of my favorite movies. I love Jimmy Braddock. I've heard Braddock. it's just. I've seen it one time. Watch um, it again. I've heard. I, I liked it when I watched. It. I watched it when it first came out to DVD. I gotta watch it again. It's top ten for me. I've top heard it's just. I think I drafted fantastic. It. Yes, you did. And I was really upset yeah. when you took it. Paul yeah. Giamatti. Yeah, because you took. You took in miracle. <laughs> You no, took Miracle. No, I, that was for hockey. Yeah, but you finished watching 30 <laughs> seconds before the draft. And we talked about a trade. But, uh, yeah, I love James Braddock. But like, I don't know how well that's going to play, but if you know, you know. And if you've seen the movie, hopefully it plays a little more. Uh, One not, of the most noble characters, I think, that you could take. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Jimmy Braddock. Uh, White Sox, Dave, you're up. I need fictional, and I'm going the world versus the aliens in Independence Day. Hell of a comeback. Thought they were just going to fucking wipe us off the face, use all our natural resources, and bounce on to the next product. Wrong. <laughs> we got the guy from Jurassic Park and fucking that weirdo doctor and Will Smith on, on the case. We'll fucking nuke your asses and have an awesome Fourth of July celebration. That doctor's still a terrifying scene. Oh, yeah. That release me. <laughs> release me. That's pretty good, Dave. Um, Am I the new Joey, Joey Molinaro? Can I say something? That day that he was on the draft, you I thought you be. were better than Joey Molinaro. Um, wow. When he was on the draft specifically. World vs. Aliens, Independence Day. I love that movie. It was One pretty, of my it was all pretty time. grim. It was pretty grim. I mean, they were just obliterating entire cities at, at, like, the click of a button, Ed. Yeah, it was pretty grim. Pretty grim. They wiped out Chicago. They wiped out NORAD. Did you they know get, what NORAD did they, is, Ed? Do they hit Chicago? Yeah, they say Chicago in the movie. Oh, just, they don't show they it, don't though. Show it yeah, though. Yeah, they don't show it, though. They don't show it. The White House, everything, mm -hmm. gone. Nope. Just give them a cold, Ed. Just give them a cold. All right. Uh, Mr. Irrelevant, Carl. I came into this draft that this is – if I couldn't get Arizona, Illinois, then I wanted this game. I wanted this game last pick, last round. I'm going 1994 Texas State playoffs, Plano East versus John Tyler. The game is 41. Have you ever seen this on YouTube? It's I don't like think a viral. So. Okay, 41 17, three minutes and three seconds left. 41 to 17. 24 point lead. So that's. Plano East comes back and wins 48 44. On 70 yard touchdown, 97 yard touchdown, and so it was probably just like the Arizona play. Illinois game, but with football, just like fumble recovery touchdown, 70 yard pass touchdown. If you if you've seen the video on YouTube, it is without a doubt the most unbelievable sequence of events that happened in a football. I think there's four onside kicks. They oh, go. I've seen yeah. shit. I, I got to watch this now. I've never seen If you haven't seen thing. Plano East versus John Tyler, I'm telling you right now, it will be the most – your jaw will be on the floor as you're watching this game play out. This is high school football it's, in front of 20,000 people, I think. Probably more. It's one of those, Carl, first off, I think the, the deepest pick in any of these drafts. But it's one of those clips that you saw it and instantly became, like, obsessed with it. Like, it almost looks kind of fake. Like, obviously, it's real. But it's so crazy and so obscure. You're like, where the fuck did this come from? And for a long time, I didn't know what it was, like what game it was. And I think like you had to like, for me, I had to Google like the thing where he's like, oh gosh almighty, like I'm about to throw up. And then you look into it and there's, now there's obviously like an oral history and shit like that or whatever. But like that clip was amazing. It's unbelievable the lead that they blow. And I think Carl, if, if I'm remembering wrong, who ends? Doesn't the team who blew the lead end up winning? I think, they, I think there's they a did. double comeback. No, Look the into uh, that. Play, yeah, John Tyler ends up winning 48 44. In the final twist, after the Panthers did a regular kickoff, Lions returner Roderick Dunn caught the ball at his own three yard line, took it 97 yards for a touchdown at 11 seconds, and a 48 44 Lions victory. So they were the team that was originally up, right? Yes. Yeah, so I think you get points for a double comeback. Obviously, the 41-17, <laughs> but then the fucking kid, it's an unbelievable pick. Seven touchdowns in the final four and a half minutes. I think I've seen it. I, it's a good one. Um, and then it won SB. It was the, uh, it's been billed by many sports broadcasters as the greatest 
high school football game played in the history of the United States. And the announcers after the game went on Jay Leno because the commentary for the, like directly after the game, because the commentary, as you were talking about Rico, it went so viral. What's he say? I don't believe it. God bless those Is kids. I'm sick. I want to throw up. No. Okay. Uh, what year was that, Carl? 19, was that, Carl? 1994, Plano East, John it Tyler. Way, it resurfaced with the internet. I saw it way later than that. That I didn't know they were on Leno at all. I just thought somebody had saved that tape and, like, put it out. I Honestly, I didn't know it went viral in the moment. That's crazy. Are they? Pl- I think they're playing at Cowboy Stadium, too. Would, They've got yeah. the big star in the middle. Yeah, yeah. They, they used to play all those Texas. Uh, also, yeah, the Cowboys yeah. end zone. Yeah. I, you shouldn't, I've been reading the Wikipedia. Apparently, the announcers from that game are the announcers in Varsity Blues. Oh, wow. good shit. Oh, you had to cast yes. those, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's great. That's a cool uh, – awesome. that It was a, a suggestion, suggestion of John Voigt. <laughs> he heard the tape, and he's like, you got to put these guys in. That's awesome. Uh, all right, I'll run through. We'll do honorable mention. We'll get out of here because, Rico, now you got a, a, a car ride that probably wants to kill you. Um, Rico, Michael Jordan, Mets, Red Sox, game six, 1986. Uh, Simba takes back Pride Rock, your mother, uh, tight clothes, uh, Chief Jesus Christ, John Snow, Tiger Woods, USA versus Nigeria, 2010, Abercrombie, Eddie Patriots. Algeria. For, yeah, Algeria. Algeria? Oh, yeah, it's a sorry. country in Africa. Al- I, thought you, I, I thought I misheard you. Um, Eddie uh, Patriots, Falcons, 28-3, uh, Chuck Taylor's Toon Squad versus Monstars, Chicken Fries from BK, James Braddock, White Sox Dave, Illinois, Arizona, 2005, Mike Vick, Short Shorts, You Play Ball Like a Girl, World versus Aliens, Independence Day, Carl Red Sox Yankees, the series. Uh, Josh Hamilton, Rocky II, starter jacket, Plano East first, John Tyler, 1994. Any athletes that anyone had on their board still? I had Mine's Ag- bone dry. I had Agassi. He was, like, addicted to crystal meth, mm-hmm. and he came back and he tore it up. Willis McGahee. Yeah, that was on. I thought about that. Um, ben Hogan almost died in a car accident and then won the U.S. Open. But mm-hmm. with Mario or something. Mario yeah. Lemieux had a. He just he didn't win a cup after he came back, but he was he had you know he had cancer. Um, Lance Armstrong. Lance, well, yeah. What about fashion? Any any fashion? Yeah, I have uh, uh, overalls. Yes, I feel like snapback hats. Snapback. Hats. That's a good definitely, one. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I have one. I have one. I was going to draft it, but it doesn't in the back. Hit, But fanny packs. That's what I have too. Boomers fanny packs. The back said tie dye, uh, wired headphones. Mm-hmm. How about Terry Strug fucking popping her knee or ankle and coming back to win? Yeah. In '96, but the, I mean, she was she wasn't out for long. Um, Duke Duke Maryland, 2001, the ten points in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also a wacky comeback in. Uh, Division two semifinal or national championship. You can look it up from like 05 that my friend, it went viral. It was on CBS. My friend was supposed to, we went to school in Massachusetts. Obviously. He was supposed to go to the game and it started blowing up. He's like, it was in uh, Springfield. He was like, oh shit, I shouldn't have gone to that game. Like you looked that up. I don't know the fucking names of the teams, but similar to Carl's where the team winning blows the lead and ends up c- coming back double. Like it's fucking nuts. Uh, and then Britney Spears for fucking miscellany. Mm. I see that. Um, I know what basketball game you're talking about. I've seen that one. It's insane. Insane, right? Insane. Yeah, it's insane. Fanny packs was good. I had that too. Um, but is that back? That's back. Fanny packs? Yeah. Oh fanny yeah, bro. Yeah. People have like Gucci ones. They like throw over their shoulder now and shit. It's All crazy. Right. Um, that's that's not a fanny pack though. Well, they just wear it differently. It's still a fanny pack. I think so, but I also I'm not cool enough to wear mm-hmm. one of those. Yeah. Uh, game, the Tracy McGrady game is unbelievable. Reggie Miller against the Knicks in, like, what, was that, 94, 95, something like that? We had eight points in, like, three seconds. Yep. Um, Cavs, Warriors, Cubs, Indians. Yeah, for series, for sure. Um, Bills against the Oilers in, like, 93, mm-hmm. where they were down, like, 35-3 to three and came back and won. Yeah. Um, I was working at Arrowhead Bar and Grill, the golf course, where uh, and I was watching Northwestern. Northwestern Chief, was, was at up, the game. I want to say thirty-eight to three Chief, at halftime and game. lost. <laughs> You're at the Chief. Reggie Miller game. Chief. Chief. <laughs> yeah, I was at the game. They're getting mad because I'm repeating it twelve times. I'm gonna I'm gonna dip out. It's an unbelievable draft. I'm gonna dip out before I catch a uh, punch <laughs> to the back of the head, you boys. Thanks, obviously, for having me. Um, take it easy. All right, All right welcome back, Rico. Rico. Welcome back.
Um, a couple more here. Sorry. Um, I have the Mud Dogs and the Bourbon Bowl. Yep. Okay. That, that, that was, was a good one. Oh, you should have taken that. You think so? Yeah, I love, I'm happy with Toon Squad. Toon Squad's good, but yeah. the Mud Dogs and the Bourbon Bowl really. Really hits. It's got the iconic quote. Bob Boucher came back. One bur- Mud yeah. Dogs won the Bourbon <laughs> exactly. Bowl. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mud Dog won the Bourbon Bowl. Yeah, uh, I love Farmer Fran, one of my all-time favorite movies. Little Giants, we talked about. Yeah, Little Giants. Is now good. you tell me this, Carl. Rico's gone, so you're probably the only person I could relate to on this. Should I have gone McDonald's Orange High C instead of oh. instead of chicken fries? No, no, no. They're they're. What about uh? I guess Chalupa has never left. <laughs> Drop the Chalupa. Uh, if they never left. Burger King's a good route. The McRib is always coming back. Yeah, no, that's that like doesn't a, count. Yeah, that, now they just do that shit on purpose. Yeah, that doesn't count. Yeah, it's crazy. Something that I thought of, um, I actually just asked the internet. I was in between, I was in between Rocky and, I, and Gandalf the White, and I knew you guys don't know who Gandalf the White is, but that's I'll from. Uh, that to the I know who that is. See. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. I've yeah. seen those movies. Um, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> That probably should yeah. be talked about. He, I think he didn't want to go to Vietnam, so I think they made him take like three years off. He lost his boxing license. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fuck. What? what? I asked Twitter. I said, better come back. Rocky II or Gandalf the White. And two thirds are saying Gandalf. No, it, there's nothing like getting it wrong. Fuck. Um, I feel like the Gandalf people are probably way more passionate about it. Yeah, they are, but mm, fuck me. Can't right. Ted guys, Williams coming back. What'd you more. say, Tom? You, you guys forgot about Derrick Rose. All right, dude. Thanks, dude. Like, I mean, uh, all right. He came back. And he never. A high. He never left though. He yeah, just he tapered did. off. Yeah, but he's yeah. he definitely had he a resurgence. Left. We don't. We I like, mean, that's, we like never talk. We talked about Derrick Rose like three years ago on a podcast, and we have really not talked about him at all since. I can tell. <laughs> Sore subject, Tom. I think that would have been a very Jesus bad Christ. pick if it no, was drafted. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you're right. I mean, it would not have been. Credit to him. No, I mean he's like reinvented from, himself, yeah. and he has like a completely different game now. So yeah, he came back. Yeah, it's definitely. I'm talking about back. when he dropped. He, he dropped a career high. That's what I'm talking about when yeah. he came back. So, but he never was out of the league or nothing. I, I don't know. I'm not gonna. Right, it right, would have definitely yeah. been a good pick. No, it's a good pick. It's just Rico. It would have been a great pick by him. <laughs> Imagine Mike White week eight for like three years, and then he just is gone. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, that's it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll see you then.